Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. At a recent presentation of state-owned Denel's results for the 2017 financial year, the group's acting CEO announced that Denel had withdrawn from its controversial Denel Asia joint venture. Keith Campbell joins me to discuss this development. Hi Keith. When was this JV formed and why? Denali Asia was set up, if my memory serves me correctly, in 2015, although I believe the press release announcing its creation was only issued in January 2016. It was set up, uh, it was a joint venture with a company called VR Laser Asia, and it was set up to act as a vehicle to allow the Denali Group to more effectively penetrate the uh, huge and rapidly growing Asia-Pacific defense markets. The reason VR Laser Asia was chosen, Danelle said uh, at the time, was because the uh, company was willing to put substantial resources into the joint venture with Danelle and that would assist Danelle to penetrate the defence markets in the Asia Pacific region. Why has Danelle decided to exit the joint venture and how will this affect its growth ambitions in Asia Pacific? Well, basically, Denel Asia went nowhere. It was not able to commence functioning. It was not able to commence trading because National Treasury was opposed to it. The National Treasury actually believed that VR Laser Asia, far from being able to put substantial resources into the joint venture, was actually technically insolvent. And they were totally opposed to this uh, agreement being operationalized. As a result, the effort was completely abortive. It brought Denel no benefits whatsoever. Meanwhile, the fact that VR Laser Asia is owned by a businessman who's close to the controversial Gupta family uh, in South Africa, about whom there are many allegations concerning improper relations with President Zuma and other government officials, uh, undoubtedly did significant reputational damage to the Denel Group. So in a situation they were getting no benefits but accruing significant harm from this project and so uh, they in the end did I think one has to say the sensible thing, the very sensible thing and they got out of the joint venture, they end, ended the joint venture. Now what does it mean for Asia-Pacific markets, well, firstly, they wasted the whole year. Uh, they did effectively no marketing in one of the most important defense market regions of the world. As for the future, well, it forces them, I think, to re-examine their approach. Uh, what, one thing always puzzled me was, you know, about the, the whole joint venture was A, why didn't they go for the small scale option of setting up a permanent office, the NAL office, 100% the NAL, in the region, the market, or B, why didn't they link up with a dedicated defense company in the Asia Pacific region? The, uh, they will now have to examine these alternatives and they will have to. Uh, seek to activate uh, an affordable, effective marketing strategy and marketing presence in the region. I suppose the quickest way would be for them to go the Denel office way, to set up a permanent office uh, somewhere in the region. Or given the region is so enormous, more than one dedicated office. Uh, which again raises the point, why did they think they could penetrate this gigantic, geographically as well as economically, a militarily gigantic market region with only one joint venture operation. Um, but we just have to see uh, what they decide to do, but they have to decide to do something. They have to get active in this market if they want a, a long, to be long-term players in the global defense markets. In terms of its financial performance, how did the group do in the 2017 financial year? Basically moved sideways. Um, uh, mark time, if you want. 
uh, the revenues were slightly down, um, just over 8 billion rand in comparison to just over 8.2 billion rand in the pre preceding financial year. Um, the share of exports in the income uh, went up, reaching 63%, whereas in the previous financial year being 58%. The uh, then uh, the net profit uh, in, in percent terms four percent remains way below where it should be, uh, and it's uh, one of the strategic priorities for the next five years is to push that up. They're still, and this is what they say. So the you know this is not my interpretation. This is what they say explicitly. They are still far too dependent on debt. They need to get the debt equity ratio down. Uh, the reliance on debt means that they're also reliant on government guarantees. If they can move away from debt financing, then they will be able to reduce their dependence on government guarantees and hopefully eventually eliminate it. Uh, a number of their projects are running late because developing new weapon systems is not simple or straightforward. And it is common for new systems worldwide uh, for unexpected problems uh, or to crop up or unexpected difficulties to occur and for projects to be delayed. But they believe they're weathering uh, uh, what they describe as a, the global financial difficulties. Uh, they believe they're weathering these successfully. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.